Hey there, how's it going everybody? Now this is going to be a quick video where I show you a feature that you've likely seen me use in a lot of my videos so far, and that is f-string. So f-strings are a new way to format strings in Python 3.6 and above, and I prefer using them over any other uh, formatting methods. Um, so if you're not using Python 3.6 or higher, then you'll need to install that in order to follow along with this video. Um, okay, so let's take a couple of examples and see why I prefer using these. So first of all, I have two variables here at the top. So I have first name and last name. So let's say that I wanted to print a sentence that says, my name is, and then include the first name and last name in that string. Now, the way you've probably been familiar with doing this is with the format method. And this is how I used to do it too as well. Um, so we have our curly braces here as placeholders, and then we're using our format method to fill in the placeholders with these values. So the first name is going to put get put in the first placeholder here, and the last name is going to get put in the second placeholder here. Now, if any of this is unfamiliar to you, then I do have an older video where I go in depth on how to use the format method that goes over a lot of these same examples that I'm going to use in this video with F strings. So if you're curious, then you can watch that first. Okay, so this should work how I have it right now with this format method. So if I save this and run it, then you can see that uh, we did get our sentence with our values that we wanted. But right now, this is not extremely elegant or intuitive. Uh, so for example, if we have a lot of placeholders, then we kind of have to go back and forth uh, to see what placeholders match up with what values. So I'd have to go back and forth between the format method here and the placeholder to see where what is going to get filled in where. But now let's see what this looks like using an F string. So I'm going to comment out what we have here, and I'm going to uncomment out the section here and I'll bring this up one. So, so far here, I have a sentence that has our two placeholders um, and I've removed the format method. Now, instead, we're simply going to use an F string and to specify that we want this to be an F string, then we just put an F in front of the string here to tell Python that this is going to be an F string, a formatted string. And now instead of using the format method, we can simply add our variables directly into our placeholders. So within the curly braces here, I'm going to say first name. And within the second one here, I'm going to say last name. So if I save this and run it, then you can see that we get the same result and that this works. But also look at how much more intuitive this looks. We no longer have to go back and forth between our placeholders and the format method to see what will be added where. We can just look at this directly and see that our string will be equal to my name is and then our first name and then followed by a space and then our last name. Now, another cool thing is that we can actually run functions or methods directly within the F string. So let's say that we wanted our first and last name to be capitalized. So to do that, we could simply come in here and say first name dot upper and also say last name dot upper. And if I save that and run it, then you can see that in our output, it says my name is and then it capitalized our first name and last name. So I personally think that that's extremely simple and a lot easier to read than if these were in a format method. Um, okay, so let's take a look at how we would print out some dictionary values using uh, an F string. So I'm going to remove all of this and uncomment out this section here. So I have a dictionary here and the dictionary just has a key of name with a value of gin and a key of age with a value of 23. And now I have another sentence here where we have a couple of placeholders and I'm using a format method for now. And to the first placeholder, we're passing in uh, this person and accessing that name key, which should be gin. And the second value here, we are putting the person and accessing that age key, which should be 23. So this sentence should say, my name is Jen and I am 23 years old. So this is how we would do this with the format method. So if I save this and run it, then you can see that that works fine. But now let's see how we do this with an F string. So I'm going to comment out that and uncomment out our second part here. 
So we have our string with our placeholders, and we also have our F at the beginning to specify that this is an F string. Now there is one thing that we need to watch out for here. Now since we are now going to access the keys directly within the string, we now have to figure out what to do with the quotes we're using to access that key. So let me show you what I mean. So if I try to just put this in directly into our placeholder like we did before, so I'll say person and access our name and then also person and access the age. Then our single quotes that we're using here to access our key to our dictionary is terminating our string early because we opened our string with a single quote as well. So if I run this, then it should give me a syntax error and it does, it says invalid syntax. So to avoid this, if you're using single quotes inside of your F string, then simply use double quotes to open and close your string. Then the single quotes will no longer conflict with those. And I do this with normal strings as well. I'd rather change the quotes than look at a bunch of escape sequences and stuff like that. So let me change the opening and closing quotes. So if I come in here, I'll just open this with a double quote and I will close that with a double quote. And now our single quotes are no longer affecting the opening or closing of our string. So now if I save this and run it, then you can see that that works fine. Okay, so now let me show you a few other things that we can do before ending this video. So let me uncomment out this line here. So like I said, we can run functions and methods from directly within the F string, but we can also do calculations. So in this example, I can simply go into our placeholder. So our string says four times 11 is equal to, and I can simply go in our placeholder and say four times 11, and then I can save that and run it. And we can see that within our F string, it did that calculation. So it says four times 11 is equal to 44. Now we can also do some more advanced formatting in our F strings as well. So in this next example, let me uncomment out this. In this example, I am looping through a range of values of one through 10, and I am just printing those out through each loop. So I'm printing out the value of n each time we go through the loop. So if I save this and run it, then we can see that our result is the value is one, value is two, and so on. But let's say that I wanted each of these values to be zero padded by a certain amount. So sometimes it can be important to zero pad values when adding them to a database or to expect a certain length or anything like that. So to do this, we can go up into our F string here and just put a colon after our value to specify that we're gonna do some additional formatting. And now if we wanted to zero pad by two digits, then we can simply say zero to specify zero padding and then two for two digits. So if I save that and run it, then now we can see in our loop here that all of our values have a leading zero except for the 10 because it's already two digits. So if we wanted to zero pad by three or four digits or whatever, then you can simply change this two to whatever you'd like. So if I change that to a four, save it and run it, then you can see that now we are zero padded with four digits total. Okay, so now let's move on to floating point values. So let me uh, get rid of that and uncomment, uncomment this section here. Okay, so here I have pi written out to a certain number of values. And in our string, we are simply printing that out. So we have an F string here that says pi is equal to, and then just printing out pi. So if I save that and run it, then we can see that that works. But what if that is a longer floating point number than what we wanna print? So let's say that we want to print to four digits. Then to do this, we can put a colon after our value here in the placeholder, like we did before to specify that we're gonna do some extra formatting. And now we, to specify that we want to only print up to four digits, then we can say a uh, point here, a dot to specify a floating point. And then I'll say four for four digits and then an F for floating point value. So I'll save that and run it. And you can see that now we have a precision of four that we're printing out this value. And we can see that it also rounded this up correctly. So it's not just chopping that value off. Um, and again, if you'd like to change the precision, then you can simply change that four to any value that you'd like. So if I do five, save that and run it, then you can see that now it's five digit precision there.
Okay, so lastly, let's take a quick look at formatting and printing dates. So I'll get rid of that there and come down here and uncomment out uh, this section and I'll separate out the import statement there. Now this is probably the kind of formatting that I use most often because the way that we want to display dates can vary so much. Um, okay, so I have created a date time here that is a fake birthday of January 1st, 1990. And we can see that we're currently just passing this uh, date time directly into our placeholder in our F string and printing that out. So let's see what that looks like by default. So if I save this and run it, then we can see that it says Jen has a birthday on 1990, one, one, and then the minutes and seconds there. So we can see that that's not the best looking output. Uh, we can read it, but it would be nice if we could change this to whatever we'd like. Um, so let's say that I wanted to uh, this to literally output, you know, Jen has a birthday on January 1st, 1990. Now to do this, we're going to have to know the date time formatting codes. And I never remember these. I'm constantly needing to look them up. But if we go to our site here, this is just the Python documentation uh, here in section 8.1.8 um, towards it's basically towards the bottom of the date time documentation. And this will give you the codes for whatever output you want. So for example, uh, we can see that the uh, percent sign uppercase B here is the code for the entire month spelled out and it gives some examples here. Um, and the lowercase B here is an abbreviated month. So remember, for our output, I wanted it to say uh, January 1st, 1990. So what we're going to want is this uppercase B to spell out January. And then it looks like this uh, lowercase D is the day. And then for the year, we want this capital Y to do a four digit year. This uh, lowercase Y is just a two digit year without the century. So we're gonna go with the uppercase Y. So let's go back to our example. And now let's fill in these values to format our string how we like. Um, so just like we've seen before, I'm gonna add a colon after our value to specify that we want to do some additional formatting here. And now we can just type in how we want this to look using those codes that we saw from the documentation. So I'm going to say percent sign B to have the month first and then a space and then percent sign D to give the day. And then I'm going to do a comma after the day and then to do the year that's going to be percent uh, uppercase Y. So now if I save this and run it, then we can see that it says Jen has a birthday on January 1st, comma, 1990. So we can see that we got the formatting that we were hoping for and that that worked well. Um, okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully now you have a good idea for how you can use F strings. And if you see me using it in future videos, then nothing will throw you off. But if you do have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.